Basel. I'm the registered dietitian at McKenzie Health Systems. And because of the COVID um, virus, we are not able to do the healthy lifestyles. So we're pre-recording and this is going to be the lecture or the instruction on eat this, not that. These are the food groups, the five food groups, the carbohydrates, which are your grains and your starchy vegetables and your sweets, your bagels, your cereals, your pasta. The vegetables, which are your garden vegetables, your fruits, the dairy, and that encompasses, for this lecture, that would encompass cheese, cottage cheese, yogurt, and milk. Then you have your protein items. Uh, they would be the animal products and non-animal products. And then the other category, which is your fats and sweets. With the holidays coming up, it might be nice to know about alternative food choices or healthy food choices. In the carbohydrate group, try to choose whole grains. If you choose a bread, the first ingredient should say whole wheat. It shouldn't say wheat flour. Wheat flour is referring to white flour. Whole grain means that the entirety of that grain is in the bread. There's more fiber, there's more B vitamins, and it's healthier for you. Um, it's also denser and has a lot more flavor. So the breads would be best, and that could be in an English muffin or a bagel, as well as a piece of bread. It could be in pasta as well, and your whole grain rices. Those would be better for you, more nutrients, more fiber, than the refined white kind, like you might get, uh, for instance, the rice in Chinese food. Um, so cook your own. That's that's number one, is try to avoid fast foods, convenience items, and processed foods, and cook more fresh at home. The vegetables, garden vegetables are great. If you can help out your neighborhood farmer by buying locally, that would be wonderful. Uh, that food is fresh. It uh, hasn't traveled across the country or from a different country to get to you. And it generally tastes better, and it's very wholesome. So try to buy locally if you can. Other than that, when you eat your vegetables, try to buy them not bagged or boxed with seasonings and spices and, and sauces. Uh, like, don't get the frozen uh, broccoli or cauliflower with cheese sauce. Just buy some fresh cauliflower, or some fresh broccoli, and cook it up. It tastes better, it has a lot of fiber. I will tell you that a frozen vegetable by itself, a green bean, a waxed bean, an asparagus, or whatever, and a fresh vegetable are comparable in nutrition. It's once you get processed foods, uh, vegetables in a mixed dinner, or in a Chinese blend with sauce, like sweet and sour sauce on it or whatever, that's where you start to lose the nutrient value, you increase the fat and increase the, the added sugar and hence increasing the calories. So eat fresh and wholesome locally if you can. Fruits are always best in season. So right now would be a great time for pears and apples, the summer, obviously, would have been your strawberries, your blueberries, your raspberries. Bananas are an all-year-round type of thing. Again, buy local if you can. If not, to get the best flavor, buy within the same season. And again, avoid fruits with sauces or added sugar, like uh, canned pie filling. Uh, instead of buying the canned apple pie filling, slice up some fresh apples yourself. And if you are making a pie or a cobbler, add your own sugar and spices. You be in charge. Don't let the industry be in charge of how much sugar or seasoning you add to your food. When you buy anything canned or boxed, it's already predetermined for you. It would be more beneficial 
if you made home, made things from home, from scratch, it will take a lot of time. Uh, being healthy costs a little bit more and takes more of your time than the fast food and the convenience items. But in the long run, you win because you become a healthier person. As far as the dairy group goes, um, try to choose low fat or fat free dairy products. The regular whole milk has a lot of saturated fat in it coming from an animal. One glass, one eight ounce glass of whole milk has about two pats of butter in it if you were to take it apart. Um, 2% milk has one pat of butter in it. Once you get down to the 1% milk, half percent milk, or skim milk, you're getting the same nutrient value as you would from a whole or a 2%, but you're saving yourself a lot of calories, and also you're saving yourself a lot of that saturated fat. Um, same thing with the cheese. If you can get 2% cheese, that would be advantageous. But if you do eat cheese, keep in mind that cheese was meant to be a condiment. It does have a high fat content. Uh, one ounce, which is about the size of your thumb, of an aged natural cheese, like cheddar cheese, Swiss cheese, Kojak cheese, has about nine to 12 grams of fat. When you're looking at a label, anything less than three grams of fat is considered a low fat food. A medium fat food is about five grams of fat a serving, and anything more than seven grams of fat in a serving is considered a high fat food, and it's a special food, something you should eat sparingly um, on a special occasion, and know that it's something you don't do all the time. Unfortunately, over the holidays, a lot of people will come to your home and bring meat and cheese trays, and that's an American staple. Not only do they have ham, a lot of the times they'll have salami on there, which is another high fat food. Um, but that was not the original intention of these food products. They were meant to be accessories. For instance, uh, Parmesan cheese on top of spaghetti or a little bit of Kojak cheese on top of uh, enchilada or a burrito. They weren't meant to be just eaten as a meal. So keep in mind that when you do buy cheese, try to buy the medium fat cheese, which is like a string cheese or a part skim mozzarella. Or if you can, in the grocery store, buy the 2% cheese instead of the whole milk cheese. And it comes in a variety of flavors. Uh, as far as the meat group goes, there are three categories of meat, lean meat, medium fat meat, and high fat meat. Your lean meats would be your egg whites, um, your fat-free cottage cheese, um, and lean pieces like a roast beef, a roast pork, uh, a boneless, skinless chicken breast. Your medium fat meat would be a regular whole egg, uh, string cheese, which would be the 2% uh, the the mozzarella cheese, and sometimes it comes swirled with a, a Kojak-type cheese as well. Uh, that also includes pork chops and a variety of fish, um, cod, orange roughy. Uh, and then in the high fat meat group, that's unfortunately where a lot of Americans uh, eat a majority of their calories from. And that would be your spare ribs, your porterhouses, your T-bones. Deli meats like bologna, salami, Italian sausage, knackwurst, Polish sausage, uh, bacon, breakfast sausage. Those would be your high fat meat foods that are to be eaten sparingly and on special occasions. Um, and then of course we have the fat group or the other category and that would encompass your desserts, pies, cakes, cookies, um, dips, uh, like sour cream and ranch uh, dip, those type of things. And those are meant to be condiments. Now, instead of possibly going to an open house with a fat-laden, calorie-laden, uh, typical American tray to pass, what you could do is go with a healthy alternative bring a vegetable tray and spice it up. Do something different. Not only your 
carrots and your celery, you could add some raw asparagus spears on there or raw green beans, um, cherry tomatoes as well. Just mix it up with color and variety and texture so that it's interesting and people are drawn, drawn to it and they'll want to try something new. Remember, people eat with their eyes, so make it colorful and attractive. Maybe put some parsley around the outside of it. And that could be an alternative to a meat and cheese tray. You could also bring a fruit salad, which would be an alternative to a meat and cheese tray. Mix it up so that the people at the party or at your family gathering, or even just yourself at home, have wholesome, healthy, lower calorie, nutrient dense foods ready and at hand rather than the convenience packaged foods that tend to be calorie dense and fat dense. Um, as far as the meats go over the holidays, if you do have a chicken breast, um, try to get the boneless skinless or at least if you buy it with the ribs and the skin on, try to take the skin off before because when you cook it the fat does cook down into the meat and it would be more advantageous for you and for your arteries if you had a leaner piece of meat and avoid the fried fish try to get it baked uh, salmon is a good choice it does tend to be fattier but it's the good fats that your body needs uh, so bake your salmon as well bake fish and if you do get tuna get it packed in water not oil to save yourselves calories and it's still very tasty and add some vegetables when you're making like an egg salad, a tuna salad, a chicken salad. Cut up some, uh, you could put cherry tomatoes in there cut up as well as onions and celery and some people eat, even eat, add some carrots all chopped up together in your salads. As far as the sweets go, if you make your sweets at home rather than buy them prepared, they still will have the fat and the sugar in them, but you can be in charge of that rather than the industry dictating to you uh, what, you'll what you're gonna eat, you could be in charge. And there are substitutes for sugar, uh, and there are substitutes for fat. Some of the recipes that I've seen call for applesauce or a fruit puree to be added to add sweetness and also to take the place of some of the fat. And the products still come out very nice. There's lots of websites you can go to online that you could Google um, healthy alternatives to traditional sweets. So typically for the holidays, uh, for being home during this COVID pandemic that we're in, I know a lot of people are tending to eat more, maybe changing the kinds of food they're eating, they're making um, critical decisions and judging things differently. They have more time too to spend with family. This might be a good time to reevaluate the types of food you're eating and to look for the healthier alternatives. For those of you that have a computer and have accessibility to look things up online. There are lots of websites. You can just type in um, healthy alternatives to traditional American foods and there'll be an abundance of websites that come up for you. I did want to point out before I go that there are different items that the industry produces Hopefully you could see this. This is the added sugar in food that really doesn't need to be there. The industry just add, adds it in because they know the American palate loves sweets. And if you were to make these foods at home yourself, you could avoid all that added sugar that the industry adds. For instance, in Kraft macaroni and cheese, when you get the box, there's sugar added. In Campbell's tomato soup, there's sugar added. Ketchup and barbecue sauce are essentially all sugar, so when you do use them, use them very moderately. Pizza, frozen pizza has sugar added. We don't often think of these foods containing sugar, but they do. That's why it's another reason to try to cook fresh from home and buy the ingredients yourself. When you buy prepackaged yogurt that's fruited or flavored, 
it has an enormous amount of sugar that's been added. Buy the plain yogurt as an alternative and add your own fruit. Make a smoothie or make a parfait. Same thing with the oatmeal. Rather than get the convenience little packets, which have sugar and salt added, just get the big container and cook it fresh yourself on the stove or just put it in the microwave. It's healthier for you and it has less additives and less sugar. As far as the drinks go, you do have naturally occurring sugar, like in milk, but rather than drink a large glass of juice, eat an apple, drink water, eat an orange, drink water. It takes about four servings, or rather four apples or four oranges to make one serving of juice. And I don't know anyone that would sit down and eat four apples at one time. But eat one apple and drink a glass of water, hydrate your body, get the fiber, get the whole food, and avoid the processed item. The same thing with your pop. Not that you can make that at home. I hope that you avoid it altogether. I just wanted to point out how much sugar is actually in a container and to tell you that the industry hides sugar by putting it in to products that have a seemingly healthy looking label. So this bare naked fruit juice is really not all it's advertised to be because it's loaded with sugar about this, the, as much carbohydrate as about four pieces of bread. So again, eat the fruit, drink water, keep hydrated, make healthy, intelligent choices, buy local if you can, cook fresh, use the crock pot more, use your pressure cooker more, make homemade soups rather than canned soups, um, eat this, not that, Basically, just avoid the processed convenience and packaged foods. Hopefully, um, you'll have a very healthy outcome, lose some weight in the mix, and I wish you all a very happy holiday, and everybody um, stay well and healthy through this pandemic that we're all fighting now. Thank you.